On this week's program, October is Co-op Month. Our special guest will be Brandy Miller, the CEO of the Kansas Cooperative Council. We'll also have features from Kansas Corn, Kansas Wheat, and the Kansas Farm Bureau in our weekly updates, the Kansas Livestock Association and Markets from Pinion. I'm Ken Rogers. This is Authentic Ag. Brought to you in part by the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers, Kansas Farm Bureau, a grassroots ag organization representing the state's farm and ranch families since 1919, KFB.org, and the Kansas Wheat Commission, lending in the adoption of profitable innovations from wheat, online at kswheat.com. Welcome to the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center right here in my hometown of Oakley, Kansas. We're the front door of Western Kansas, located on three main highways, I-70, US-83, and US-40. And all those roads lead to history, beautiful scenery, and adventure, no matter which direction you go. We now have an IHOP that brand that you've trusted up and down the road in all your travels is staffed with local folks, real people, just like you and me, and we're waiting on you to join us. So for fun, adventure, fuel up, fuel your body, and let's have some fun. Agricultural news from agview.net. The Kansas Department of Agriculture recently updated its interactive map of Kansas. It shows the economic contribution of agriculture all across the state. It's located on the KDA website. It is an interactive resource that can be used to find the agricultural economic facts for each of the 105 counties in Kansas, as well as a report for the entire state. KDA annually updates the state and county economic statistics that feature 71 sectors of agriculture and ag-related industries' impact on the state's economy. In addition to the direct output, the report includes the indirect and induced effects of agriculture and ag-related sectors that demonstrates the total impact that agriculture has in our Kansas communities. Now, this economic contribution of agriculture totals over $70 billion, supporting more than 250,000 jobs. The economic report includes a list of top 10 sectors by output and employment. And guess what? Once again, the top sector in both categories is beef cattle ranching and farming. That includes feedlots and dual-purpose ranches and farms. Other notable sectors on the top 10 list, grain farming, dog and cat food manufacturing, and landscape and horticultural services. Updated county and state economic impact data as well as export data available on the KDA website. That's agriculture.ks.gov forward slash KSAG. Well, the National Cattlemen's Beef Association has released its proposal for voluntary cattle market price discovery. In a letter to NCBA members, their president, Marty Smith, so the proposal lays out a plan to increase negotiated trade and incentivizes each of the major packers' participation in such negotiated trade. An NCBA working group came up with a report called A Voluntary Framework to Achieve Price Discovery in the Fed Cattle Market. The framework explains in detail what the organization calls the 75% plan. It is designed to provide negotiated trade and packer participation benchmarks for the industry to strive for. Smith said the plan seeks to achieve no less than 75% of weekly negotiated trade volume that current academic literature indicates is necessary for robust price discovery in a specific region, among other thresholds. And recent buying sprees means that China is running away with the top spot of the U.S. corn buyer list early into this marketing year. China has purchased over 10 million tons for delivery during this 2020-21 marketing year. That's twice as large as sales to date for Mexico, which is usually the number one U.S. corn purchaser. Find more ag 
information online at agview.net. Stay with us. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. Over the years, sorghum has been either exported, used in animal feed domestically, or for other industrial uses. Recently, its use in the ethanol market has seen tremendous growth, with 30% of domestic sorghum typically going to ethanol production. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well in their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yeah, we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. ValleyVet Supply. And October is co-op month in Kansas and around the country. And to talk about that is Brandy Miller, who is the CEO of the Kansas Co-op Council. Hi, Brandy. Hi, Ken. I'm so excited to be with you today. Well, cooperatives play a big role in all our lives. Even may you may not think about it, from those grain elevators you see dotting the the plains of Kansas to things like credit unions and things like um, uh, cooperative ventures like telephone and and internet providers. So you know, when you look at the cooperative world. Um, what maybe started out as neighbor helping neighbor continues even into 2020. That's absolutely correct. Actually, if you think about even the western half of Kansas, a lot of the amenities that we take for granted, uh, financial access and even electricity and telecommunications, as you mentioned, in addition to our farm-owned cooperatives, they, they brought those amenities to the rural parts of the state. And so really cooperatives play a big part in our lives. And oftentimes we don't even know what, what, uh, what function they're playing. Well, it is very interesting as we uh, take this time every year to celebrate what cooperatives mean. And uh, one thing I think it's been very interesting is how uh, you know, co-ops have been able to adapt to all the different changes from technology to the way uh, folks do business to just f folks getting together to find ways to provide uh, needed services. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you think about the way the cooperative business is structured, it's that democratic control. And so as an owner, you have a say in how the business is run. And I think that's probably the beautiful thing about why cooperatives have been able to weather these storms, uh, if you will, throughout the many years that they've been present in the state is they just, a lot of uh, diversity in the leadership from the owners of the cooperatives. Well, I think, you know, obviously this time of the year, uh, you know, not only do we celebrate co-op month, but with harvest, you know, a lot of times we, we focus, you know, on, on uh, agriculture co-ops and, and it's more than just grain elevators. I mean, uh, you can have all kinds of, of agriculture uh, co-ops that uh, put together for uh, different, uh, say, fencing supplies or or livestock supplies. It's it's not maybe just those those silos that we see uh, uh, all along the road. Absolutely, I think that unless you uh, are an active cooperative member, you may not even understand or appreciate all the different activities that the co-op and services the cooperative can provide. There are some co-ops that own convenience stores across the state of Kansas, as well as agronomy services. Um, 
tire services. So if you're broke down, they might come and they can bring you a tire. And then as you already mentioned, you know, those ag retail services, so farm stores to provide feed for livestock and a lot, very active in the 4-H space. So huge impacts in that, in that way. Randy Miller is the CEO of the Kansas Cooperative Council. We are celebrating Co-op Month here in Kansas. Let's take a break. We'll come back with more in just a moment. Kansans are saving money and getting quality coverage with Kansas Farm Bureau Health Plans. We are happy with our Kansas Farm Bureau Health Plan. It's, it's not only saving us money, but we're a few months into it now, so our local clinics and hospitals now do have all of that information in. And, um, it's, it's working well. We're, we're pleased with it. Saying I think people uh, look at that $50 fee for a membership and think, oh, I don't have to do this with other companies. I'll spend that $50 to save $14,000 a year. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. And joining us is a Brandy Miller, who is the CEO of the Kansas Cooperative Council. It is October Co-op Month. And uh, Brandy, you mentioned just a little bit earlier, 2020 has brought a number of challenges, but also a number of opportunities. And, and you've had the opportunity now to get out and about and, and visit a lot of your members. And it seems like, you know, it was years ago, not just months ago, when the, the COVID situation hit. But I think one thing that many of us can see is that cooperative spirit, if you will, and, and, and those cooperatives in the state have really led the charge and, and, and trying to pull everybody together uh, to face whatever this uh, new normal, if you will, is. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've seen a lot of wonderful things happening across the state from providing PPE to local hospital and healthcare facilities, uh, providing financial services in the financial cooperative space to help folks that are struggling financially. And so, you know, certainly has been challenging. I, I don't want to downplay that, but I've really been impressed with how resilient these cooperatives have been and supporting their membership and trying to just whatever the new normal looks like, just trying to adhere to that and serve. I mean, co-ops didn't close, right? They stayed open. All the cooperative systems in the state stayed open to serve their members throughout COVID. And so I, I've appreciated being able to work in that space and see the great things that have come out of that. The leadership of the Kansas Cooperative Council really touches all the different kind of branches, if you will, of cooperatives. And, and talk about how kind of the, 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 your, your board, this, this other leadership, has worked at trying to figure out, okay, where do we go from here? In looking down the road, maybe 2021 and so on, um, are you doing some of those long-range plannings of maybe what cooperatives will look like in Kansas? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've really been talking about, and it's hard to long range plan plan at this long range plan at this time. It's just not been a an easy task, but we certainly are having those conversations in the boardroom, and it has been great to have the credit union representation, and electrical cooperative representation, and then the farm and ag retail cooperative uh, cooperative representation. Some of the things that we're talking about is this may be our new normal, and so if this is what that looks like. How do we as an association continue to support our membership and what can we do from a training and education and an advocacy perspective to continue to meet the needs of our members today? Well, Brandy, we sure appreciate uh, your efforts and, and the members of uh, keeping Kansas cooperative strong. And we look forward to uh, continuing this celebration, uh, not only focusing on maybe one month out of the year, but also just celebrating it year round. So we appreciate you uh, joining us today. Yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Randy Miller, the CEO of the Kansas Cooperative Council, has joined us. Stay with us. We'll have more in just a moment. I'm Bob Swartz, and I've devoted the last 43 years to helping Kansans reach their retirement goals and to protect the family farm. 
At Bob Swartz Financial, we believe everyone should be able to live the retirement they've always dreamed of. Our team of professionals can help you create an efficient strategy using a variety of investment vehicles to help you address your financial needs and your concerns. Bob Swartz Financial values, commitment, and transparency. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. Over the years, sorghum has been either exported, used in animal feed domestically, or for other industrial uses. Recently, its use in the ethanol market has seen tremendous growth, with 30% of domestic sorghum typically going to ethanol production. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. My name is Zoe Schultz and I'm a junior at Kansas State University. I've been involved with Kansas Corn kind of starting with the Collegiate Academy um, and then now I'm also an intern with them. I was involved with our Collegiate Academy through their Class 3 program. In this program we were able to dive into the industry through meeting industry partners, um, whether they were involved in livestock, ethanol, trade, um, just kind of any of those big components of production ag. It was really cool to see all different sides and kind of how the trade moves um, as corn influxes the market every single year. With this program, you get to hone in on some of your leadership skills. One of my favorite parts of the program was meeting Candace. Um, she was with the U.S. Grains Council. I mean, coming from a farm, I really didn't understand that, that aspect of it. Um, now I like to tune into those trade missions. Whether you are planning to go back to your family farm or you're looking to work for a company or organization, um, leadership groups like Kansas Corn Academy really open your eyes into diversification um, outside of the classroom and you get to meet new people. So the application process is really easy. Um, you need two references and you just need to be able to discuss on your abilities and what your involvement is in with industry. Um, applications can be found on our website. Um, they are going to be due November 15th, um, but don't stress about that. They don't take a lot of time. Um, if you have some good references, um, you can list them and then just ask them to kind of fill out a reference form. Um, as well as the applications for Collegiate Academy, uh, the scholarship is going to be due the end of October. I believe that is the 31st. The scholarship is really awesome as well. Kansas Corn really values education. Um, they value students um, completing their education and then um, whatever they decide to do after college, um, they fully support as well. Um, so I encourage anyone to apply for that scholarship too. The Collegiate Academy application and the scholarship application can both be found at kscorn.com. Kansas Corn reminds you that E15 fuel is the right choice for every kind of driver. For the car enthusiast, E15 has higher octane. For the thrifty driver, E15 is priced lower than regular unleaded. For the nature lover, E15 provides cleaner air. For the shopper who buys local, E15 has more ethanol from our Kansas corn farms. Choose E15 for a higher octane, lower price, cleaner American fuel. Message from the Kansas Corn Commission. Learn more at kscorn.com. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Over the past half century, Kansas wheat farmers have contributed millions of their own hard-earned dollars toward wheat research through the wheat checkoff. However, the cost of research continues to increase while government funding decreases. The Kansas Wheat Commission Research Foundation was created to increase research funding above and beyond the resources of the checkoff. And while the checkoff is paid only by farmers, the foundation allows private individuals and all segments of the industry to support wheat research through tax-deductible gifts. The Research Foundation recently announced that its Fields Forward fundraising campaign has surpassed the $2 million mark toward its goal of $4 million by the end of 2021. This was made possible by a number of lead donors, including the Jack and Donna Veneer family, 
who continued their legacy of giving by donating $1 million to the future of wheat research. Other lead donors include the Mole Family Foundation, MKC, Great Plains Analytical Laboratory, Cereal Ingredients Inc., Robert Hatch, Comark Equity Exchange, Skyland Grain, Graincraft, and ProValue Insurance. Funds raised through the campaign will be used for three different purposes, fields of research, fields of study, and fields of the future. The campaign accepts many types of gifts to support wheat research, including cash, stock transfers, donations of grain, and deferred gifts such as will bequests. Visit fieldsforward.org to learn more. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yeah, we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. You can always email me at Corey at SureCropFertilizers.com and with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. Over the years, sorghum has been either exported, used in animal feed domestically, or for other industrial uses. Recently, its use in the ethanol market has seen tremendous growth, with 30% of domestic sorghum typically going to ethanol production. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. New technology being developed at Kansas State University is capitalizing on the power of artificial intelligence to build a database of facial recognition technology for the cattle industry. Like humans, each cow has a set of unique facial features that modern technology can scan and later use to track the animal throughout its life. The technology is based on the geometry of the human face. It uses intricate biometric measurements to put a parameter identification on a person and is capable of nearly 100% accuracy. A group of K-State experts in computer engineering and veterinary medicine and animal science began discussing how to apply this technology to cattle last fall. Initially, the group made short videos of 1,000 feeder cattle that were restrained in a chute, taking panoramic views of each calf's head. From the videos, computer engineers took individual images and uploaded it to a neutral network. Once the pictures are loaded, the system teaches itself which of the biometric measurements are critical. The K-State team recently tested the reliability of the network feeding images of cattle already in the system and some that had not yet been entered, which showed 94% accuracy. According to K-State experts, the bigger the database becomes, the higher the accuracy will be. Buy-in from producers will be essential to growing the database. Are you looking for Medicare supplement insurance plans? Now is a good time to look at your options with Kansas Farm Bureau Health Plans. A Medicare supplement insurance plan can help cover certain out-of-pocket expenses Medicare doesn't cover. Things like deductibles, coinsurance, and certain limitations that can be costly in the event of an accident or illness. With Kansas Farm Bureau Health Plans, you have options to Medicare supplement insurance plans with four levels of affordable coverage and service from an organization known for its commitment serving Kansans. We encourage you to compare our rates. For more information and to get a quote, contact a Farm Bureau Financial Services agent near you or visit kfbhealthplans.com. Medicare supplements insured by Members Health Insurance Company, Columbia, Tennessee. Not connected with or endorsed by the U.S. or state government. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldy Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldy Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids, 
from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yet we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. You can always email me at Corey at SureCropFertilizers.com and with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. Hey guys, Colette here with Pinion, a division of Keiko Isom. An interesting week in the markets as we continue to grind towards the top range of the markets in corn, beans, and wheat. Corn trading over $4 futures even out to next harvest. Beans pushing that 1080 mark nearby, but the 21 harvest contract still can't make $10. Wheat is at some of the highest levels of the last five years amidst weather concerns in several places. Many people are asking how high we can go or how long we can stay up here. Lots to watch the next couple of weeks. Do we continue to see demand in export sales? What does the dollar do? How about crude oil? How does the election impact the markets? What becomes of South American weather and crop? There's no shortage of news for the grains to trade. Cattle markets, on the other hand, are lower this week. It will be interesting to see the effects of COVID on the cattle market this fall and winter. There are plenty of fat cattle out there to be slaughtered, and people may look to stock up their freezers some more if COVID continues to rise. As we look out ahead over the next few months and evolve our marketing plan, it can be tough to make decisions amidst uncertainty. Give us a call at 888-452-8751 or visit us at kco.com to see how we can help you make the most of market moves and protect your crop. I'm Colette at Pinion and I hope your harvest is going well. Well, it's harvest season, so be sure to look up and look both ways before you proceed to the next field. We and your family want to make sure you're around. I'm Ken Rogers. Thanks for watching. Join us next week for Authentic Ag. At Farm Credit, we partner with America's farmers who work hard each and every day to grow the food that we all enjoy. It's not an easy task, but it's an important one. Farm Credit is proud to work with farmers and ranchers, lending support in rural America. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yeah, we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. You can always email me at Corey at SureCropFertilizers.com and with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you.